The Alexander Keeland was thought to be able to withstand the worst of storms, but in 1980, it capsized while housing over 200 workers, and even though the Keeland had more than enough lifeboats and plenty of time to evacuate, 123 people were still tragically killed that day. After years of investigations and public mistrust, it was determined that the Alexander Keeland tragedy could have been avoided, but it was a result of corners being cut as well as human error. Please remember to hit subscribe before you forget. The Alexander Keeland was serving as an accommodation platform, also known as a flotel, for workers in the neighbouring EDA platform. On the evening of 27th March 1980, the flotel lost one of its five legs in severe gale force winds, but not an extreme storm. The accident started with one of the bracings failing due to fatigue, thereby causing a succession of failures of all bracings attached to this leg. When the leg came loose, the rig almost immediately developed a severe listing, which means it started to lean towards one side. Within 20 minutes of the initial failure, it capsized completely. It was floating upside down with just the bottom of the columns visible in the sea. Both the escape and evacuation operations were far from orderly and had limited success. Only one lifeboat was in fact launched successfully. Minutes before 6.30pm, those on board felt a sharp crack, followed by some kind of trembling. Suddenly, the rig heeled over 30 degrees and then stabilised. Five of the six anchor cables had broken, with one remaining cable preventing the rig from capsizing. The list continued to increase, and at 6.53pm, the remaining anchor cable snapped and the rig turned upside down. 130 men were in the mess hall and the cinema. The rig had 7 50-man lifeboats and 20 20-man rafts. Four lifeboats were launched, but only one managed to release from the lowering cables. A fifth lifeboat came adrift and surfaced upside down. The men quickly righted it and 19 men were gathered from the water. Two 12-man rafts were thrown from Ida and rescued 13 survivors. Seven more men were taken from the sea by supply boats and another seven swam to Ida. No one was rescued by the standby vessel which took an hour to reach the scene. In total, of the 212 workers that were on board the Alexander Keeland, 123 people lost their lives, and just 89 people were rescued. The investigation concluded that fatigue fracture in a support brace on one of the platform's columns was the direct cause. An inadequate weld had been overlooked, and a crack formed that developed over time, which had probably been in existence since the rig was built which was determined because some of the cracks contained paint. Annual inspections were mainly carried out for the columns and pontoons, and the inspection in September 1979 had passed. However, the bracing that failed had not been included in the inspection. The five other tubular bracings connecting to the vertical column broke off due to an overload, and the column became completely separated from the platform. Consequently, the platform became unbalanced and ultimately capsized. News of the disaster shocked everyone in Norway, where the majority of the victims were from. At the time, Norway had suffered several oil and gas related accidents, but none were of this scale. Many lessons were learned from the incident, and the industry had drastic changes and improvements to health and safety. It's unlikely something like this will ever happen again.